Okay guys, we are playing black. So against d4, let's play the knight to f6, let's play the king's in the defense. Okay, let's go g6, I guess that knight to c3 is coming next. Okay, so let's go g7, probably e4, or maybe knight to f3. Okay, so let's play short castle. And yeah, basically I guess that e4 is coming next, so let's play d6. And basically got some moves, uh, some ideas. Okay, now uh, on those kinds of positions you want to maybe uh, try to win this pawn. Okay, or maybe even try to make him a, a push on a, on d5. So first of all, let's put some pressure on the knight. If he's going to play h3, I'm going to take the knight. And then uh, knight c6 with the tempo on this pawn, with the tempo on his queen. So uh, even though it might be theoretical, I do believe that uh, bishop on, this, on d3 is a bit misplaced because it's blocking the view of the... Um, of the queen, the defense of the queen on uh, on d4, and in case you will try to maybe push on uh, d5, you can always jump with the knight to e5, and basically get get a very nice fork. Now, if he's going to push, uh, the top move is actually to play knight to d4, and if he's going to take, you're get getting rid of his uh, dark square bishop. You get uh, you get it. You get. Um, a very nice uh, uh, square for your pawn and with the tempo on his knight. So let's see what how it's going to play. And as you see, we also got the tempo on the queen. We also got some pressure uh, on his uh, position. So yeah, actually really enjoy from my position for now. I think that uh, this position black is actually better. And of course, you need to be careful not to blunder in his queen. So. It doesn't really have a lot of space around this diagonal. As you see, those knights are uh, securing uh, four of those squares. So basically, it's got um, um, d1 or maybe a square on uh, on the dark square. But yeah, you can also take. Most people just take, but now we got the tempo of the knight. Now. <clears throat> Uh, we need to make sure that we are not blundering this uh, pawn away, of course. Uh, now, playing c5 isn't really work because you can take on Passa. Uh, we can basically move the knight. Uh, we can also move the knight to maybe d7 with a nice idea of a fork between those uh, two pieces. Um, so yeah, I guess that knight d7 basically... Um, as you see, we are a review. Uh, we give the bishop um, a very important uh, diagonal in order to protect this pawn. We just need to make sure that you cannot really attack it one more time for now. So yeah, no, now it seems completely okay. Um, yeah, so let's play the knight uh, d7. Basically, we are ready to jump to one of those squares. Okay, now we got a very nice fork between the queen and the bishop, of course. So, yeah, I guess we can just uh, take. Okay, we can also play maybe even bishop. Uh, bishop e5 makes some sense in order to maybe create something on this diagonal. But I think if you can allow us to play maybe even uh, for c5, it's going to be actually quite good because we don't want to blunder this pawn. Again, downside is that you can take with the pawn. So, I guess uh, in order to protect this pawn, we can play queen f6. Downside is that again, you can maybe even go for a uh, rook d1 in order to try to win this pawn. So, yeah, um, I'm not really sure. Yeah, so I guess after uh, queen f6, he will try to maybe uh, put a rook. So, I'm not really convinced that it's going to work. So, let's play uh, c5. He doesn't really have to, to play in passa. So, if he doesn't going to play in passa, we have a very solid structure. If he's going to take, I'm going to take with the pawn, and then if I'm able to play uh, c5 anyway, I'm going to play for c5, of course. Okay, so he decided to take, obviously. Uh, so we are down a pawn, but I'm sure that uh, this is nothing really serious, because we can basically push and uh, win the pawn back. So, yeah, basically we can just win the pawn back with a tempo on the, on the rook, of course. And now, basically, we got uh, e5. e5, you can play for uh, f4. Um, 
we do need to acknowledge that so you can play for f4 so okay so maybe even also queen a5 just getting rid of this pawn so okay i got an idea let's move the bishop back and i will try to protect this pawn yeah fortunately he's, he's faster than me okay uh let's move the queen to a5 in order to maybe win this pawn and if you will try to protect, I'm going to put a rook on d8 and then we, we can maybe even slide the bishop back. Okay, basically my whole idea, my, my whole idea in this position, position is to try to promote the a pawn. Okay, so even though we might uh, going to blunder um, d6 away, we, we might be still in, uh, in a good position. But um, I really hope that he's going to be occupied around this uh, a2. Okay, but again, if he's going to take, I can take, and he cannot really take another pawn because I can win a rook, a win a knight. So let's see, and he cannot really play for a rook a1 because I can take with my bishop, and then I'm definitely better, and then I can I'm able to put a rook on a d8. So yeah, tough decision, but I know there is some line to protect, um, to protect d4, but actually, I mean, after queen f6, you can put a rook, and then, and then it's not so simple to defend. So I know there is a way, but yeah, I can check with the engine after the game, of course. But I know there is a way not to lose this pawn. But okay, uh, no, it's not not the end of the world, of course. Okay, so we went for a uh, queen. Uh, <coughs> Uh, queen b3 makes some sense, but now basically we can play with the tempo on the queen. So this is actually good for us before even committing for a, a rook d1, d8. Okay, and we can also slide the, the bishop uh, back just in case. Okay, so decide to give a queen for, uh, for the rook. Okay, so I guess he's trying to go for the checkmate maybe. Okay, and of course we cannot really take because uh, because we are pinned and we must play in this position uh, king g7. Okay, we don't really want to lose this bishop, of course. Yeah, it's uh, actually an interesting decision to exchange the queens for uh, two rooks. So, okay, basically for now we got a queen and a bishop against two rooks and a knight. Uh, but basically, if you are able to clean one or two pawns and then go for a promotion, I, I guess that you are going to be better. Um, but yeah, let's see how it goes. Okay, I'm going to pre-move a uh, king takes even though it's a bad move, but um, he's thinking, so I guess he's considering something. Okay, so... He's trying, of course, to win my bishop, but there's no need for that. And bishop d6 is a blunder, of course. So let's go bishop e7 with the tempo on the on the rook. And yeah, basically we can move to safety. If I move to uh, h6, I guess he will try to maybe attack this pawn, and it's not so simple to defend. Um, king f6, he can try to maybe go for e5, but I think that... Uh, it's better, and as you see, it's not so simple to attack this pawn because this bishop is also guarding on uh, f8. So, in case that he's going to play, for example, on uh, rook g8, uh, sorry, rook h8, in order to put some pressure on this pawn, we can always push if necessary. So, it doesn't seem like we're in, a, we're in a bad position or something. Okay, also, one more thing, guys, is that. Uh, in case that, for example, we have uh, a check, this diagonal is really scary for uh, for a rook. So for now, we move the rook to safety, but um, yeah, we can keep that in mind. So let's uh, make something happen. Basically, we got this check, but we cannot really win this uh, knight, of course. Um, Basically, is going to play like this. Okay, but I think that actually we can try to play for uh, probably f2. We just need to make sure that there aren't any checks or anything. We can also play bishop uh, d5. If we try to push, I can take. So yeah, I don't really see 
Yeah, so actually bishop uh, d6 is an interesting choice. I guess he can block with the with the knight. Yeah, I kind of misplayed that. Yeah, he can block with the knight. Uh, mm, yeah. Okay, so let's go h5. Let's try to maybe win the knight by force. Yeah, because now we cannot really take this pawn. It's also a bit dangerous if we're going to align the king and the uh, and the queen on the same uh, on the same fire. So yeah, let's play for h4. I guess maybe uh, rook h8 in order to prevent that. We can still basically take and double up his pawns, but uh, I don't really want to give up a piece for uh, for no any for no advantage. So I will try to play for h4 and take with the check if I'm if it's possible. Now there is a problem in uh, white position that he can try again to to prevent us from playing uh, h4 with the uh, rook h8. But then we can play uh, king g7. We are basically securing uh, those three squares. This pawn is also securing this square. Okay, never mind. So we find the move by pushing uh, this pawn. Very nice idea. And basically I can uh, take this free pawn because this knight is spin. So this is a start. Also we can then try to maybe take this pawn with the check. So seems like uh, white position is start to collapse. Okay, and again, he cannot really take because uh, my my his, his knight is uh, pinned by my uh, bishop. So, uh, in those kinds of positions, the opponent can try to maybe attack your bishop in order to win your knight, uh, to win your queen, sorry. So, we need to acknowledge that. And basically, queen takes on h4 is coming next. Um, we got some ideas. He can try desperately, maybe defend with h3, but it's not really working because you can take, you can give a check on uh, g4, he would move back, and then you can take the pawn. So, king h3 in this position is not all, uh, going to really work, and you cannot really move the knight, so, yeah, uh, not, not such a simple decision. So, I guess that... Even though it's an interesting uh, position, I think that sliding the queen back um, was a more uh, safe idea, but, you know, um, you can never know until you try, actually. But I must say I do admire some, uh, you know, risky play stars and trying some, uh, trying some uh, new stuff, not always by the book. So, yeah, interesting, uh, interesting idea. I guess he will uh, basically resign because uh, he doesn't really have a lot of time on the clock and it doesn't seem like uh, it's, it's easy to find moves on uh, this position. Uh, this pawn is hanging, this pawn is hanging, uh, and the rooks are completely disconnected. Okay, so now first of all we don't need to react to that. First of all we want to take with a check before we are going to react to anything. Okay. Um, now, <clears throat> basically, we can take and take. This is completely fine. We can maybe even develop um, bishop e5 with the tempo on the, um, on the rook. But yeah, the problem is that uh, bishop e5, we can try to maybe even go for a double up and we might be in some troubles. <coughs> also, uh, knight e4 is coming next, I guess. So I think the, the safest option is to just take the knight. <clears throat> and if he's not careful, I will try to maybe win uh, one of those rooks, uh, exploiting this uh, <coughs> is the this weak diagonal. So basically, <clears throat> seems like we are better, but uh, he still got two rooks, so it's not over, of course. Now let's see if we can find uh, an ideas. So first of all, we got this check. He can play for uh, king h2. Now we got. Um, Another check, but it's not really working. So basically, if I move the king, okay, and then I can, for example, play for um, for this diagonal. I can I can win the I can win one of these rooks, but it's kind of obvious that it's going to double up on uh, on f7. I can see that. So a uh, check is going to move. Check it can it can go back. Um check i can take yes yeah, so i don't really see any way to win a rook a piece by any means so yeah i guess we can just try to maybe play fast and even though f7 is going to collapse 
because we got the time advantage we can uh, we can enjoy that so let's start with a check okay um, of course we can play like this if you want but he's got another check so yeah this is a bit pro problematic um, Okay, so let's maneuver the queen. Okay, now we got the check. We can take another pawn if you want. So we take this pawn. And even though we might lose this pawn, we can actually sacrifice the queen uh, for the two rooks. So it's not really the end of the world. Uh, and again, his, rook on, his rooks are not disconnected, but we can try to maybe make something happen if he's not careful. Okay, and we still got some uh, more time on the clock. Okay, so let's push. Okay, and as you see, this is what I was talking about. This diagonal can be easily exploited if he's not careful. For example, uh, rook a7 is just gg. So it's really, really not easy to find, uh, find the move for uh, white, especially under time pressure. Okay, because on time on uh, games like this that you play with two rooks against queen, it's possibly a draw. But in case those rooks are going to be disconnected and your king is open, it might be a GG. So yeah, not not so simple. We can also take if he's going to take check. I pick up a rook. So let's give another check. Okay, and check. No, actually, I want to push, so um, we want to push the pawn, but we still cannot do it. Okay, I got I got a sneaky idea. Let's go check. We can push. No, it's not really working. Mm, it's not really working. Basically, I was thinking about push. It takes check and I pick the rook, but um, no, it's not really working yet. Uh, yeah, we are still going to win it by the clock, but I was trying to find uh, a better move, maybe. Okay, let's move here. And it doesn't really have a lot of time anyway. Okay, so now, now we can do it, because basically we can push. If he's going to take, I can take with a check and pick the rook. So I, no, I don't really think that he's going to fall for that, of course. So now basically we can promote. Yeah, and basically my idea is that you can take and I can uh, promote a new queen with a check and then um, as you see we are going to exploit this diagonal in order to try to win the second rook. Okay, so GG will play. Interesting match and yeah, see you next time. Thank you.